So breaking news is that the BBC have fact checked Joe Rogan. <laughs> like the BBC are the purveyor of all the facts. So I went through this full fact check from the BBC on Joe Rogan. And I'm going to talk to you about it in a moment. But um, if you go on the BBC homepage and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll and you scroll, there's nothing about all the protests going on in London that have happened on a weekly basis with tens of thousands of people. If you scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll, there's nothing about the Canadian truckers and, of course, the mass protest that's going on there. There is nothing there. Yet, fairly front page news above the fold on the BBC is that um, four claims from Joe Rogan's podcast fact checked. So, look, I, here's the irony. I can't even talk to you about those four fact checked claims by the BBC that they're calling a fact, which is really their opinion, because I will probably get cancelled for that. So I can't do that. But um, it looks to me like the BBC have undertaken this. The BBC have not got an independent panel to undertake this. The, the, they have undertaken this. And at the bottom of the article, it says BBC reality check. So it looks like BBC are claiming that anything they don't agree with, they're um, calling a reality check when they fact check it. So the problem here now is becoming that the fact check is a, a weapon. It's a weapon of language. I can just say, check your facts, started with Trump, or I am fact checking and it implies I am a higher authority and or power than you. That's not the case. Um, now, BBC are, are perfectly within their right to publish what they want. But mainstream media are scared. They are scared. And I'm going to talk to you about that in, in a moment. So, um, but what BBC didn't do when they fact checked Joe Rogan is they didn't fact check the mainstream view because they're calling Joe Rogan misinformed and being a purveyor of misinformation. So what they're essentially doing is using the word misinformation as a weapon against Joe Rogan and others that they don't agree with. Um, but it doesn't look like they've done a fact check in reverse. In fact, the first of their four fact checks, they didn't um, cite any scientists whatsoever. None. So it looks like um, they fact checked the first of his four um, things that they're picking apart. The other three, they did cite research and, and scientists. Um, also, if they are fact checking the... Um, what Joe Rogan is challenging in mainstream science, if you like. Um, what about modelling the consequences, not just the actions? So from the start, I've been pretty pissed off that there has not been any modelling of the cost of small business and the cost of entrepreneurs and the cost of, cost of employees of small business, of which small business is 90% of the economy. The cost in um, unemployment, the cost in suicide, the cost in possibly a five or a 10 year depression. Um, so someone's just asked, why am I talking about this and go back and talk about money? I talk about money every single day. So you can actually see that on, on my channels. I talk about that every day. But I think this fight against mainstream media um, is important. Because um, if we all get cancelled and deplatformed, then none of us can talk about anything. So here's the irony. Some people want me to go back to talk about business and entrepreneurship and money, which, by the way, I'd love to do. Um, but if I don't talk about this and mainstream media basically cancels us all or someone, a, a, a musician, decides he doesn't like free speech. So he threatens Spotify and um, you know, looks to call for Joe Rogan to be cancelled. And we let that happen. 
If we let that happen, then none of us have a voice and none of us can talk about anything. So we have to stand up for this. I think it's really important. Um, so, you know, Neil Young gave the ultimatum. It's Neil Young or Joe Rogan, but it's not both. And I think it was very good that Spotify um, stood up for essentially free speech. Now, the critics will say that Spotify stood up for the fact that they bought Joe Rogan for £75 million. And if that was the driver, fine, but at least the right decision was made. And what you think of Spotify and how they treat their artists, that's a separate conversation for another day. But right now, we're not just fighting for freedom of speech here. We're fighting against these language weapons. So misinformation is now a, a word that's a weapon. And fact-checking is now a word that's a weapon. In order to find facts, we have to debate both sides. Yet mainstream media is often not debating both sides. Yet it's citing misinformation from the, uh, the other side it doesn't like. And it's citing fact-checking as if it is the purveyor of facts. When that is not balanced, it's not holistic, it's not debate and it's not discussion. And we have to preserve balanced views, balanced opinions and holistic discussions and holistic debates. In reality, both sides, whatever those sides are, have probably made some good points. But no one is all right. No one at all. So right now I'm in a challenging position where the only channel now where I can speak freely without censorship and I can use the C word and the V word is my podcast Disruptors. Like I cannot read you the four areas that BBC have fact checked Joe Rogan, because if I say those words, I'm banned and people are warning me about this. So I cannot on social media talk about uh, the V word, the C word, the L word, the P word or any other word related to what's gone on in the last two years, even though it affects us all, which is ridiculous. So I'm put in this paradoxical situation where I kind of want to just really mostly talk about business and entrepreneurship and money, which a lot of my followers want to do. But if I don't stand up for our freedom for speech, I won't be able to talk about anything because I'll be completely controlled by mainstream media, you know, and the algorithms, etc. cetera. Um, but then if I actually speak up about it, I could get deplatformed de and cancelled anyway, like I just got deplatformed and cancelled on YouTube. So now we're in a very difficult situation here where we have to dance carefully. Um, but in order for you to be able to get undoctored, uncensored and unfiltered content, really now the only place you can find that is on podcasts, which, I, which is why I think it's important to um, stand up for Spotify and Joe Rogan. <coughs> and you might, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. You might not like Spotify. Fine. That's your opinion. I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm not. You might not like Joe Rogan. Fine. That's your opinion. I'm cool with that. But you probably like your ability to, to speak freely and to debate and discuss openly and freely. And if you value that, then you must stand up for Spotify and Joe Rogan, I believe, right now and push back against mainstream media and push back against, you, you know, these people who are using ultimatums and leverage to get rid of content that they don't agree with and using misinformation as a weapon. So um, my only fully uncensored platform is now my podcast. Um, so if you go to robmore.com forward slash pod, I have a podcast called Disruptors. Six year anniversary this year and a thousand episodes. In fact, six year anniversary this month and a thousand episodes. And I've interviewed 16 billionaires, Floyd Mayweather twice. I've got Jake Paul in a few days time and have had some controversial guests. And that has got me banned from YouTube. So Peter Schiff and um, David Icke and people like that. And listen, Peter Schiff's not really that controversial at all. He was on Joe Rogan four times. But these two um, interviews that I did, which is me trying to show, you know, you know, essentially different viewpoints and discussion points. This has got me um, banned from YouTube, shadow banned, second strike. So if you go to robmore.com forward slash pod, I've got some celebratory anniversary gifts of my podcast there. But on the thank you page, you can subscribe either on iTunes or Stitcher. Um, maybe you want to subscribe on Spotify. I'll leave that up to you. But just do make sure you subscribe because everywhere else now I have to censor myself. I can't say the C word, the V word, the L word, the P word or anything like that. And I don't like that. I don't like it at all. But um, I think it's I think the reason that this is happening is because I think mainstream media is losing control. So um, I spoke to Simon Cowell a few weeks ago. And he used to get 25 million primetime viewers on his talent shows. Do you know what he gets now? Have a guess in the comments. Do you know what he gets? It used to get 25 million 10 years ago, primetime. 
Now he gets 1.8 million. 1.8 million. I had a, a video um, a few months ago that got a million views. These videos that I'm doing here, they're getting 50, 100, 150,000 views. So I'm now a tenth or a half or even two thirds the size of the biggest primetime show in the UK. That's crazy. That ain't, mainstream media is losing its control and its power. Um, so uh, in America, um, some prime time will get half a million views or 1.5 million views. Joe Rogan gets 100 million listeners a month. So do you think maybe mainstream media have a motive to shut down people like Joe Rogan? And I don't, I'm, I'm not calling for the death of mainstream media, but they, but also we should not be trying to shut down in the, Individual creators, commentators, entrepreneurs, etc. Now, here's the irony. We just we let YouTube channels crack on where they're doing competitions and unboxing toys and entertainment and stuff like that, which, you know, it's good for entertainment, but it's no real hardcore production value for the um, progressing of society. But fully holistic debates, really addressing subjects that can develop and evolve humanity are the ones that it seems um, are trying to be shut down. Now, um, I think some mainstream media probably want to shut Joe Rogan down. They probably want to censor and ban Joe Rogan, and we need to fight for the opposite. We need to fight for everyone's right to speak freely and to discuss openly and to have a balanced discussion from both sides. And if we don't fight for that, then um, our ability to deliver our own content has gone. Because as soon as Neil Young says, or oh, Spotify, it's me or Joe Rogan, and, and Spotify go, oh, OK, Neil Young, we love you, by Joe Rogan. Because they might have done that had they not paid 75 million for the rights to all of his back channels, you, you know, his back catalogues. So um, then who, then someone else goes, someone on here could go, I don't like Rob Moore talking about this, cancel him. It's me or him. Buy Rob Moore, buy everyone. That's the thin end of the wedge. And that can't happen. So please hit the share button. I know this is like my fourth video in four days on this subject, but I'm, I'm going through the evolution of it. It's not always the same content. BBC have waded in now. If you look on the BBC website, you cannot see anything about the um, Canadian truckers, which is massive news. You cannot see anything about the protests that go on in London. But in fact, you have to scroll a bit to find the Spotify story. But not until BBC said, Four claims from Joe Rogan's Spotify podcast fact check. Then all of a sudden, it's above the fold on the first page. <whistles> hmm, not sure what you think about that. Um, but if you want uncensored, unfiltered, unadulterated content from me, the only place you can get it now is my podcast, Disruptors. Um, I'm going to challenge myself to interview disruptive guests from both sides. So, for example, I interviewed Nigel Farage. Uh, and, and we're in talk to interview Jeremy Corbyn. Now, if you're in the UK, you know them and they're pretty opposing because I want to have balanced discussion and debate. I was listening to Noam Chomsky, who really sounds like a complete anti-capitalist and, and an anti-corporation kind of person. And I'm a pro-capitalist, I would say. I don't label myself, but I'm, I'm, I'm pro-free markets anyway, not um, intervention capitalism, which we have now. I didn't agree with a lot of what he said. I didn't agree a lot of with what he said about a corporation and a limited liability and, and things like that. But I wanted to listen to challenge my views because the guy is smart. So we have to challenge ourselves to be open for both sides. I don't want that mainstream media to die because it's quite useful often. But I definitely don't want them killing individual creators either. Uh, um, and just because it's not affecting you right now, um, you, you know, doesn't mean you shouldn't speak up about it. And a couple of people have said, hey, Rob, why don't you just carry on talking about business and entrepreneurship and money? And why are you talking about this? Because if I talk about business and entrepreneurship and money on social media, I get a few thousand views. But if I discuss topical discussions, I get hundreds of thousands of views. I'm also fighting for my ability to actually get my content to you and not get deplatformed, in which case I can't share anything with you. <laughs> so please hit the share button. Please let me know what you think of this going on. Here's a quick summary. Remember at robmore.com forward slash pod. Um, I've got some special anniversary six year 1000 episode gifts waiting for you. Um, so if you want to be a creator, 
If you want to start your own podcast, build your own media channel, if you want to be a content creator, monetize social media, um, if you want to, you know, increase your following and your reach, if you want to be able to outsource admin and get yourself a VA and a social media assistant, all of those things. If you'd like to do all of those, I've got special gifts and bonuses for you at robmore.com forward slash pod. Um, but also on the thank you page, it's where you can subscribe to the Disruptors podcast. It's, it's, it's probably a dying breed of um, unmanipulated content now. And another reason why I'm pushing to support Spotify and Joe Rogan is because obviously Spotify um, is a podcasting platform. Joe Rogan is a podcaster. And if we shut down one podcast, we, we risk shutting down all the podcasts that aren't mainstream media narrative or controlled or, or financed. And then everything is just censored. Um, someone has just said here, why am I interviewing Jeremy Corbyn? I can't imagine you liking his views. That's exactly why I want to interview him. I want to interview Noam Chomsky and I want to interview Jeremy Corbyn because I don't agree with much of what they say, but I've not met them. And I should encourage holistic discussion and debate and I shouldn't be a hypocrite. You know, I, I, I am pro entrepreneurship. I am pro free markets. I am pro the, the American dream if it still exists and if free markets still exist. But I should still challenge my own viewpoints and encourage balanced discussion and debate. A, a problem right now is everyone uses their opinion as fact and then that as a weapon to beat down someone else to gain their own significance. That's not good for society, in my opinion. OK, so here's what's happened. A um, quick summary. Hit the share button. BBC have fact checked Joe Rogan, but there's nothing about the London protests or the Canadian track, uh, truckers. But above the fold, um, front page BBC, um, Joe Rogan, four claims from his Spotify podcast, fact checked. They even say at the bo bottom, BBC reality check. Um, so they picked out four things he's talked about, the C and the V and the last two years that I can't even say. It didn't look, it, one of them looked like it was BBC's opinion. Um, and the rest of them is obviously from mainstream scientists. Um, but we must fight, I believe, for balanced views, opinions, discussion, debate. We must be holistic. And, you know, I don't think most of mainstream media is. Um, so therefore, we must fight for the freedom of non-mainstream media. And we must fight against people who make ultimatums to deplatform individual creators like Joe Rogan. It looks probably like mainstream media is scared of Joe Rogan and losing control. Because prime time in America and the US might be half a million views, a million views, a million and a half views now. That would be 95% down on 10 years ago when it might have been 20 or 30 million views. Yet Joe Rogan's getting 100 mil plus listeners a month. So our mainstream media scared, our mainstream media trying to deplatform, trying to censor. They probably are. And if they are, we need to fight against it. We must fight against it. We must stand against it. And we must fight for other people's right of freedom of speech and balanced discussion to preserve our own freedom of speech and balanced discussion. So please hit the share button. Someone's just said this one needs to blow up and these platforms need to be challenged. I completely agree. Um, I'll share some lessons on this in another video. Like, you know, you must be a multi multi platform. Um, you know, you must find a way to share your voice, but not get yourself cancelled. You kind of got to play the dance and the game with the mainstream media and have your own channels and platforms. Because what you don't want to be is, you know, banned from everywhere and you're only on bit shoot and rumble where, um, you know, <laughs> where maybe you don't want to be all day, every day. And if you want my fully uncensored content, like, for example, all the interviews in full detail, with, I did with David Icke. Now, I don't agree with David Icke that there are reptiles living in the moon. But actually, some of David Icke's theories look like they maybe have come to truth and fruition. So why should he be deplatformed just because I don't agree with what, half of what he said? I don't agree with half of what entrepreneurs say, and I'm an entrepreneur. But we must all be able to have our opinion and our discussion. Uh, and, you know, we only have evolution through growth, and we only have growth through challenge, and we only have challenge through both sides. I mean, I hate saying sides and left and right. Life isn't like that. Life is not just left and right. Life is 365, 20, 2D. It's not 2D, it's 3D, 4D. I don't know what it is. But we must allow freedom of speech and voice and opinion because it's opinion. It's not fact. It's so arrogant for people to say we fact checked. No, 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 no. You opinion checked. What, a BBC, the fountain of all facts? No, BBC are a media company that are financed by someone and have their own motives. That's why you don't see the protests in London and you don't see the Canadian truckers in mainstream media. 
So please hit the share button. Please fight this and um, go to robmore.com forward slash pod. Um, if you want to be able to find the only place where I can comfortably and freely share uncensored information. Um, and to me, that's a bit of a shame. You know, let's I'll give you an example of this. I want to ask millionaires and billionaires, has the C word in the last two years affected your business? Because that's a very topical question, which can give us good strategies and tactics to grow and solve our own business. But I can't ask that now. I cannot ask that anymore. I asked Peter Schiff, who's been on Joe Rogan four times. You know, how was the last two years? I even said the last two years affected your business and small business. And he said, COVID <coughs> has greatly affected small business. And then I got cancelled on um, YouTube where I got shadow banned, uh, citing misinformation, I, ironically, from a bot. Ironically, I know more about small business than YouTube because I have a small business and YouTube has a big business. So what is the world coming to? But I, I don't want to not ask these questions because they're the most topical and relevant questions of the moment. Do you want to know how to navigate and start and scale your business through these uncertain times? Of course you do. Do you want to know how to not just survive but thrive through these uncertain times? Of course you do. Therefore, do we have to talk about the implications of what's been going on in the world? Of course we do. And do we have to challenge mainstream media views? Of course we do. So hit the share button on that note. I've got to get out of here and get yourself on over to Rob Moore dot com forward slash pod where you can subscribe to the disruptors it's always free there's no subscriptions there's very few ads um and you know i'm interviewing disruptors and i'm going to go for bigger badder bolder more disruptive guests because i see it as my responsibility to face this um and take the risks so you know um i was actually quoted on netflix i don't know if you've seen that new netflix series about the girl in the window next to the door or something like that it's um it's quite a, a popular show on on netflix and uh, um, someone says, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. That's my quote. That is my quote. And I'm going to leave you with that. If you don't risk anything, you risk everything. Take a risk. Hit the share button. Do your own content. Stand. You're not standing up for Spotify and Joe Rogan. You're standing up for your own ability to be a creator, um, to be able to speak your mind and share opinions and have open and holistic discussion and debate. That's what you're standing up for. Um, and uh, yeah, if you go to robmore.com forward slash pod, that's where you can get my only now uncensored content. Uh, I can't even read to you the four things on the BBC website that they're fact checked because it's riddled with, wor with words that if I say those words, I'm very likely to be shut down on social media. And that is an Orwellian world that I don't think we want to continue to allow to happen. So thanks for your support. Hit the share button. I'll see you soon. By the way, every day I do talk about entrepreneurship. I do talk about business. I do talk about money and digital assets and building recurring income and being a creator and leveraging social media and the creator economy and building a personal brand. And there's lots of great opportunity for that right now. Honestly, there's endless opportunity for that. And I talk about that every day. But I'm going to talk about this every day until we make a change. So thanks for tuning in. Hit the share button. And I'll see you at robmore.com forward slash pod. A thousand episodes and six years of podcasting. The Disruptors, celebrating with some special content creation gifts from you. And on the thank you page, you'll find um, where you can subscribe to my podcast. By the way, I was nowhere in Canada and now I'm way up in the charts in Canada for my podcast. So clearly my Canadian friends and I have similar views in Australia and many um, countries around the world now. My content's flying up the charts. Um, so it's nice to see. Thanks for support. Really appreciate you. I'll see you at robmore.com forward slash pod. Laters.